Okay. First of all, good, good afternoon for everyone. And I, I'd like to thank Sander Herr, first of all, for having the great idea of Choose Spain. That is a good place. So I hope you enjoy your time here. Okay. My name is Guillaume Peris, and I'm going to show you uh, my PhD work developing the Universidad Politécnica of Valencia about the influence of the parameters involved in eye breaches during a fire event. I don't know if any one of you have heard something about breaches and fire. I guess you haven't. So the first question that arises is, why breaches and fire? Does it really happen? A recent study published by the New York Department of Transportation that have collected 500 1,502 bridge failures during the period 1966 to 2005, shows that fire was the fifth main cause with a total of 52 cases, more than three times the failures due to earthquake. That it is a highly studied and contained in regulations. So yes, it does. And more, and more often than we could think at first time. So maybe here is someone coming from California, and, and remember what happened in the MacArthur Maze interchange in Oakland, a tanker truck carrying 2, uh, 32,000 liters of gasoline crashed on the intersection and caught fire under the overpass. As we, have, as we can see in the picture, the bridge collapsed and it was really impressive. Two of the spans fell down and the collapse it was produced only two, 22 minutes after the, the accident. So the firefighters couldn't do anything uh, before the structure collapses. The intersection was closed during one month, and the direct cost of the reconstruction that includes demolition, reconstruction, and traffic control were around $9 million. $9 million. And I want to highlight the fact that the indirect costs that were estimated by the California transportation were $6 million per day, which is a total amount of $180 million, which is 20 times the reconstruction cost. Another recent example can be found in Detroit. Another tanker truck crashed under the overpass and produced a collapse only 20 minutes after the, the accident. So, as we know, bridge and fire, the fire under a bridge can have important social and economic consequences. And then we have seen that fire and bridges is important, and it is a topic that it is not studied. So the second question that arises is, are there any guidelines that show us how to study bridges and fire? Eurocode 1, in its part 1-2, that reads actions on structures exposed to fire, uh, speci only specifies building actions. And as we know, the dynamic of the fire is different in closed compartments than in open fire, that is our case. So its recommendations cannot be used. The only guideline that treats minimally this topic is the NFPA 502, that talk about road tunnels, bridges, and other limited access highways. That says that for bridges over the length of 300 meters, engineering analysis should be prepared that includes the, all pos uh, uh, the possible collapse scenarios. But this guideline doesn't tell us how to perform this analysis, neither which fire scenarios we have to choose. So our goal in Universidad Politécnica Valencia is to improve bridge resilience against fire. As we have seen, the main action that can cause collapse is, the tanker, is a tanker truck under the structure. Because of that, we have chosen the eye bridges since it's a typical configuration of over paces. And in the United States, it's a very common type of bridge. And as we have seen with the MacArthur Maze and the Hassel Park accident, it is a very vulnerable structural system. So our, the, main op, the main goal of our methodology that we are going to propose here it's to study the maximum adiabatic temperatures over the structure, which parameters influence that. So a total of six parameters will be, we are going to study. Four geometric parameters and two parameters related to the fire scenario. In one, the first one is the vertical clearance. 
that it is the distance between the rod below and the bottom point of the bridge with values of six and nine meters, the span of the bridge, which is the distance between the supports, the width, and the bridge substructure configuration, that is the deck supported by piers, as we can see in this, in this picture, or the deck supported by abutments. Also, two fire scenarios, two parameters related to the fire scenario have been analyzed. The position of the fire load with the, fi with the fire centered under the bridge or the fire close to the abutments. And also the heat release rate representing the type of fuel. Then a total of six parameters with two level each have been analyzed here. If we do all possible combinations, a total of 64, 64 simulations will appear. Because of the high computational cost between one day to three days each simulation, uh, it has motivated us to, to find a way to reduce the number of simulations. So at Aguchi, the design of experiment technique has been used here to reduce the number of simulation to 32, where the fifth order interaction is confused with each simple effect of the parameters. Here we can see the resulting cases with all the combinations. And the main, the main objective is to obtain the maximum adiabatic temperatures reached over the structure. For that purpose, FDS has been used since experimental studies are so, are so expensive. This, this, the um, combination of computational fluid dynamics with finite element models have been used in, uh, to reproduce reasonably well the behavior of a of a bridge and their fire in a real incident in Birmingham in 2002. More information, you can find the, the paper. Then, the simulation control volume varies according to the fire scenario with the span, with the width, and the vertical clearance. And the a mesh size of 20 centimeters have been chosen, uh, resulting in a mesh ranging from th one to three millions of cells. Uh, the file load a horizontal surface has been chosen as a file load with 12 meters length and 2.5 meters width at one meter above the road level to simulate the, the tanker of the tanker track. Heat release rate, as I have said before, is a parameter of the analysis. CO and SUD yield have been chosen according to the SFP handbook manual. Uh, all the surfaces have been modeled as a diabetic, temper as a diabetic surface. That this tool will obtain the temperatures of the gas around the structure, regardless of the material of the bridge, which gives the option to perform a more accurate uh, heat, transfer, heat transfer model by finite elements. And w in these models, we can take into account the thickness of the plates that in FDF we cannot, we cannot take into account. Three sensors have in place every 20 centimeters along the, the girder, one in the bottom flange, and two in both faces of the web. Only the most exposed girder is analyzed here, that it is the central girder due to the symmetry of, of the fire. We, here we can see an example where, is the, where the, mac, the temperatures, the adiabatic temperatures are plot along the longitudinal axis of the most exposed girder. As it is expected, the maximum temperatures are reached close to the fire and they decrease as we travel farther from the fire load. Here we obtain all the results. The web temperatures have been obtained uh, with the average of both phases of the web. So for each case, we have the maximum adiabatic temperatures in flange, in the flange girder, and in web. So now we have the values. Then. How can we know what parameters are responsible for these values? Then an, 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 a statistical method called analysis of variance, ANOVA, has been used to detect the simple effects and the interaction that could be possible with, with the parameters that affect the maximum adiabatic temperatures. Here we can see the result, the result of the ANOVA for bottom flange temperatures. Um, P values below uh, 0.05 indicate significant influence. As we, as we can see, span length and bridge width do not have influence on the, over the, maxim on the maximum adiabatic temperatures. Um, 
but they have influenced how they decrease along the along the grid there. Um, vertical clearance, heat release rate, and position of the fire load are the main parameters that affect the bottom fine adiabatic temperatures. That is because the main factor that influences the bottom fine temperatures are the incidence of the flames, and these parameters are the that affect this this effect. When we focus on web temperatures, also bridge to a structural configuration affects the maximum adiabatic temperatures. This is because of the smoke accumulation beneath the, the bridge. As we can see with these two videos, when we have a bridge supported by abutments, the smoke accumulation is higher than when we have a bridge supported by piers. So the maximum adiabatic temperatures on web are affected by the bridge to the structure configuration. But not all, until now, we, we have we had focus on, on, on the simple effects. But also there are interactions that when a specific combination of factors appear, they produce higher temperatures. Uh, if we look at the clearance, the position of the tanker track at the bridge to the structure configuration, when we have a bridge with high meters clearance, with five meters clearance, the flames of the tanker track reach the, reach the structure and the girder have high temperatures. When we increase the clearance to 10 meters, we can see that the flames that do not reach the structure and then the temperature will be lower than the first case. But if we focus on the last image picture, we can see that the, when we, the tanker track is close to the abutment, the flames arrive to the, to the bridge, even with high vertical clearance. That is because the quanta effect, that it is the natural tendency of the flames to adhere the, the wall. So with bridges with high vertical clearance, it is possible to have problems because of a fire and beneath it. We have, we have, we have focus on maximum adiabatic temperatures, but where these temperatures, where these maximum adiabatic temperatures occur inside the structure affect the structural behavior of the bridge. Um, two case, two structural analysis have been performed to, to see if the maximum adiabatic temperatures, the position have influence on the structural behavior. Uh, with the adiabatic temperatures obtained in FDS, have been performed a heat transfer model with abacus to obtain the temperatures in steel and concrete. Then with this evolution of temperatures, a, stru a structural model has been performed to analyze the times and mode of failure. Uh, a 21 meters span bridge has been, uh, been analyzed with two different fire scenarios, with the tanker track centered under the bridge and the tanker track close to the abutment. The bridge has five girders and four diaphragms. Also, it has been taken into account the restriction to the, spans, to the expansion because of adjacent spans or abutments, because the, the girder cannot expand indefinitely because they will contact with the, with the adjacent elements. So two rigid bodies have been placed in the structural analysis uh, at a joint expansion distance at each extremity. Once the bridge, the girder contact the rigid body, high, ax high axial forces appear that will produce the failure of the fixed support. And then a spring has been modeled to permit the <coughs> displacement of the, of the girder in the fixed support when once it has contacted with the other extremity. Here we can see some results from the analysis. As we can see, uh, the failure is here are plotted the gelding, the gelding of the girder, and the bridge fail because the steel bridge is the ultimate strain. In both cases, the failure is because high gelding. In the case with the fire near the abutment in the area contact with the rigid body, and in the case with the fire uh, at mid span, it appeared in the area in the wave area of mid span. And it also will suffer a, a lift because of the high axial forces that restrain the displacement, the longitudinal displacement. I want to highlight the difference of times of failure. 
even if they have maximum adiabatic temperature, similar maximum adiabatic temperatures, the time of failure is different in both cases. When the tanker truck is close to the abutment, the failure is produced around five minutes. But when the fire, when the fire is placed at mid-span, the failure occurs at 12 minutes, more than the double. So there is a, not only maximum adiabatic temperatures have an influence on the behavior of the structure, also where are placed these maximum adiabatic temperatures have an influence on the structural behavior in times and mode of failure. As a conclusion, uh, this is a, qual a qualitative analysis, it's not a quantitative analysis, more we have to perform more experimental studies to, to validate FDS in open fires with this kind of, of events. But one of the conclusions, some of the conclusions that we can take from the analysis is that the bottom flange temperatures are influenced by, by the vertical clearance, heat release rate, and the fire position of the tanker truck, of the fire load. The web temperatures are also influenced by the smoke accumulation beneath the girders. So the bridge substructure configuration is a parameter that, have take, that has to be taken into account in the future proposals. Also, we can detect that with the methodology proposed here, we can detect when, with a combination, when a, combi a specific combination of parameters uh, cause higher temperatures than the way than when they act uh, alone. So, as we can, as we have seen that in, with the Quanda effect, that when the position of the tanker truck is close to the abutment, and even with high vertical clearance, we can have problems in the structural behavior of the of the bridge. Also, it has been seen that the worst possible position is the tanker track close to the abutment because it has a premature failure. Uh, the, the, the work presented here is part of my PhD, uh, but it has been introduced as part of the simulation services of the company that I work now, that is Euro Studios, that is a civil engineering company and building development consulting company with a strong focus on new technologies as beam and computer simulation for all kinds of phenomena. If anyone has any question, I will be glad to answer. So I don't know if anyone has seen the cockroach. Yeah. yeah, I was waiting for it to come over here. <laughs> I think it started in the corner. It's been traveling around. <laughs> any questions? First speaker? Yeah, we have a few. OK, just one second. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, what failure criteria did, did you define for the structural analysis? Is it a maximum uh, deflection, or did you uh, define uh, um, maximum stress of steel? Or we have look at the maximum deflections, the the maximum deflection on the girder that I didn't. There is one uh, here. That is one of the parameters that we have analyzed. That is the maximum deflection over the girder. The, in this case, the, ma the most exposed girder. That the failure is clearly, it can, you can see when the vertical deflect, when the deflection of the girder uh, increase suddenly. So, and also, the, when you perform the analysis in, in my case, I perform in Abacus, usually you don't, they stop the analysis because they cannot find the equilibrium of mm. the structure. So the speed of uh, deflection is your um, failure criteria in this case? Yeah, but yeah, because of the high yielding that appear in the area. In one case, in the contact area, because they have the increase in this part. And in, when the fire is at mid-span, the increase of the deflection is produced there. You can see a difference on, on the on the displacements because it is produced, um, I don't remember the, the name, okay. When it is produced a plus a yielding, the, the, it's not a continuous displacement. Mm -hmm. So you can see that it, you have a failure there. If you analyze not the maximum deflection, if you look at the deflection at the moment of failure. Okay, thank you. 
hello. Hi. Um, I have a question. You use FDS for um, determining the adiabatic surface temperature in the flame region. Uh, did you quantify the uncertainty that comes with it? Yeah, yeah. I'm not focusing on the exact maximum adiabatic temperatures. In this analysis, we are doing more a uh, qualitative analysis. So I know that in the area close to the to the flame, I know that the values are not exactly because uh, I use 20 centimeters cell size. So I cannot in a fire that it's 50 megawatts, 80 megabytes. So I cannot reproduce exactly the the flame. Okay, so you did not an sensitivity analysis on the radiative fraction, for for instance. Uh, yeah, I know that with the radiative fraction, for example, now I'm, we are doing in the Universidad Politeña of Valencia a experimental study of a bridge with six meter span with a pool fire under the bridge, and we are we may I I didn't do this analysis, but the next step of our research is to perform a sensitive analysis to reproduce and validate FDS with. Okay, thanks. Hello, I have a question. Um, have you tried to uh, do a cross-check analysis with, instead of using FDS, just use a hydrocarbon time temperature curve in yeah. ABEX model and how it relates to the times of destruction of the structure here? It's, it's the, we, the first analysis that I did in my PhD was hydrocarbon fire versus FDS. And hydrocarbon fire, you, what, all the gear there is at the same temperature or only one part. So I think you cannot use hydrocarbon fire for this kind of events because as we have seen in the, in the, I, I hate Madoko. Okay. Uh, here, hold it. Okay. When you only have the maximum de temperatures in one area, so if you apply hydrocarbon fire for all the gear there, you don't reproduce well the real behavior of the structure, and you are. Well, I don't know how to say over over estimating the. Time. I think you cannot use. Yeah, I, I asked because uh, we lived in a beautiful world where where we did not care about bridges fire safety and you ruined that for us now. Uh, <laughs> we have to care now, and uh, the hydrocarbon fire protection is the closest thing closest <laughs> thing to this what we have now. So if we are yeah, our our goal is to propose in the future a curve with these parameters, for example, and a statistical method to say the maximum diabetic temperatures if you have a five meters clearance bridge with bridge to start a configuration with peers, blah, blah, you are, in an equation, you can find the maximum diabetic temperature and later yeah. you can perform a curve, a parabolic or something. That would be fantastic, thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, I, I remember an article some years ago about uh, transferring the AFTS results to Abacus. Uh, how did you transfer the temperature to the Abacus surface? Okay. Uh, I, I, we made a sensitive analysis with steps in the girder, over the girder. So we first used the maximum, the average, the average temperature over all the girder. Later we made two steps and we made the average of the two steps, later with four, with eight, and finally with eight and 16, made, we reached the same result in, in Abacus in, with times and mode of failure. So we don't need to reduce more the, the steps. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, well, thank you very right, much. Thanks.